Do you want to start streaming your games? If the answer is yes, then fantastic, you're in the right place, as it is finally time for a beginner's guide that showcases just how easy it is to start streaming from your computer, and why it's really not as expensive as you might have thought. I'll be using OBS and Twitch in this guide as they're the most popular options, but don't worry if you want to use YouTube, Mixer, or any of the other different software suites, as they all work in pretty much a very similar way. The starting step to streaming successfully is to fully understand the hardware requirements and use a computer that's capable of providing a great streaming experience to both the user and the audience. Game streaming is more intensive than just gaming, as you need to also simultaneously encode and upload a video stream while rendering the game frames themselves. Therefore, a powerful CPU really is essential, and a 6-core Intel or Ryzen processor is really going to be a great starting point to really get the best results. But you will of course also need a powerful graphics card that's capable of driving the game at 1080p at over 60fps. The computer that we're using here is from this video's sponsors, Nvidia and Overclockers UK. It's using a Ryzen 2600 CPU paired with Nvidia's brand new GTX 1660 Ti graphics card for an ideal balance between gaming performance and streaming capabilities. It really is a great way to start streaming without breaking the bank. So if you do want to learn a little bit more about this computer or anything else that's been featured in this video, you can find it all listed down in the description below along with current pricing. Setting it up with everything you need takes no time at all, as realistically, you just need a copy of the free to use OBS Studio, up to date game drivers and then the title that you want to play. To make your stream just that little bit more professional and enjoyable, you also want to connect a microphone for clean voiceovers and then likely a webcam to add that little bit of personality. Setting up OBS is actually very simple these days and I've found that the automatic setup wizard is pretty much going to be the best starting point for most of us. Making sure that your gaming display is set to the native resolution that you want to stream at and the game set to borderless window mode, open up OBS and then start the automatic setup wizard. This will assess your current setup and then choose streaming settings that work best for your current scenario. The base canvas resolution should fill your entire screen and match the display that you're playing on. The output is the resolution of the file that will be encoded and streamed and ultimately this determines a large chunk of the quality that the audience will see. I'd highly recommend keeping both of these resolutions to the same settings as downscaling 1440p or 4K to 1080p is likely to complicate matters and it can result in a stuttery stream. You will also need to choose between 30 frames a second and 60, and as you might imagine, 60 is a lot harder to encode and upload, so do give both a try and ultimately see what works best for your setup. The bitrate is the other main determining factor when it comes to quality, as a higher bitrate setting will result in a less blocky stream. The options that you choose will be highly dependent on the capabilities of your PC, as well as the upload speed of your broadband connection, as higher settings will need more rendering power and a larger upload speed. So running the upload speed test is a great idea, as this will set the best quality for your connection. An area where things can get just a little bit confusing is with the encoder, and if you didn't already know, an encoder has the job of getting all of your game frames, all of your audio, everything that you want to put into this stream, and then compressing it together into something that you can not only send up to the cloud, but something you can send up to the cloud very, very quickly. There are currently three main options, X264, Intel's QuickSync, and then Nvidia's NVENC. X264 exclusively uses your CPU to encode the entire video stream, whereas QuickSync and NVENC use dedicated hardware encoders to take some of the strain away from your CPU cores. NVENC, or the Nvidia encoder, actually started all the way back in 2012, and it works by using a chip that's actually embedded onto the graphics card to accelerate the encoding process while maintaining great visual quality. And this is something I've actually been using for years, pretty much since it started. And the reason for this is because it requires no additional setup, it pretty much works out the box, and it has a much lower CPU overhead, which means that when you're actually playing your games, you get a higher level of frames per second, which, especially if you're doing something competitively, can make all of the difference. This tech, however, is now better than ever, as with Nvidia's latest Turing architecture, RTX 20 series and GTX 16 series GPUs are now about 15% more efficient than before, which gives you even higher quality recordings and streams, and more frames a second when capturing. So you combine this with the improvements to OBS and Streamlabs, 
and you're actually looking at the best streaming experience to date, with no second streaming PC required, and this is all enabled with a graphics card that can cost as little as £199. So once all of your encoding settings are actually all dialed in, you're pretty much ready to go on that front, but now you need to configure your stream, set all of that up, which includes your camera, microphone, and of course the game itself, so that you're ready to broadcast, be beautiful, and be the next big star. That sounded lame, didn't it? Sorry about that. You, I promise you won't be as lame as me. That, I can guarantee. It really is pretty easy, as OBS lets you create scenes that you can then use and save for one-click streaming in the future. But to create your first one, all you need to do is hit New, and then feed it your active game window. OBS has a drop-down with all the different types of input, so simply find the game capture source, and then select the game window that you're actually trying to stream. You can move and resize this by dragging, but you're probably going to want to right-click and set it to fill the entire screen, and then lock it in place. Once this is done, it's time to add any additional video sources, like webcams, green screens or overlays, and pretty much any other video options that you plan to include. You will also need to adjust your audio levels before going any further, and these can be found in the lower window of the screen. Just make sure that your microphone is around about 70% louder than the game volume, but if your mic hasn't actually shown up at all yet, then you can actually select it under the Options drop-down menu, and you're going to want to make sure that while you're there, you're muting any sources that you're not using. At this stage, you should be pretty much all set up and ready to go. If you've already logged into Twitch, then all of your details will actually be right there for you, no other steps required. But if you haven't, or you want to use different services, then you're going to need to log on to their websites, get your stream key and all the server information, copy it across, and then actually plot these into OBS, as this is ultimately how OBS knows where to actually send your stream to. Once this is done, all you need to do is give your stream an engaging title, set the game name in the settings, and then start streaming. That's it, you're now doing everything that you've always dreamed of. You probably should open a couple of browser windows to actually check that everything looks about right. Your platform of choice should give you some information about your stream health, as well as yourself actually watching the stream muted. If something doesn't look right, then do check your settings, and consider lowering down some of the quality options, as this is likely to fix the majority of your issues. But I will be really interested to hear how you get on with this, do start your first stream. Who knows, you might really like it, it could become a big hobby for you, or who knows, even a career. If this video has helped you though, please hit the like button. It helps out so, so much, you wouldn't believe. And if there's something that you want to feed back, maybe something I've missed, or just anything at all, let me know down in the comment section below, as I'd like to think that this is a community. So let's work on this together and help each other out. PC Master Race and all of that. But thank you so much for watching, do subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks to Nvidia and Overclockers for making this video possible and sponsoring it. And I will see you guys in the next one.